My name is Ozzy Tesfai. I'm an actress and I started a jewelry company that gives back to people in need called Fortune Culture. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and I was fortunate enough to go to a French school in LA that my mom sent me to. And at a very young age, I traveled back to Ethiopia where a lot of my family still is today. It gave me a strong dichotomy of two very different cultures. I went from excess and abundance in Los Angeles to family in Ethiopia that had very little. So I think at a very young age, I knew that my purpose was greater that there was this other part of the world that was living very different than I was. I was lucky that I had a mom that believed that I could do whatever I wanted, and I wanted to be an actress, and I wanted to pursue that, and so she supported me in that. So I followed my dream with the support of my mom. It went well, there were good times and there were hard times, like anything that you want to pursue that's not um, the normal path. I got to the point where I wanted to do something where I could really make my mark and I booked a pilot in which I was playing Melanie Griffith's daughter, adopted daughter, and Antonio Banderas was our neighbor and Tippi Hendren played my grandmother. Um, it was a pretty cool cast and I thought if I could write the perfect scenario in which to create, this would be it. And I remember on one of my days off, I was walking to go see a movie and it was raining and, and I wasn't happy. And I called my best friend crying and I thought this is all that I'd ever dreamed of and all that I'd ever wanted and sacrificed and worked so hard for. Why am I not happy? And she is an actress as well and had been doing it longer than I had and she said, it's funny when you get your dream and you realize that that's not enough, it's devastating. And you put all of your life into thinking, if I get this one thing, if I'm successful in this one thing, it'll change my whole life and everything will have meaning and that's not the case. And in exploring that, I realized that my legacy wasn't being an actor and that this thing that gave me so much joy was very self-serving because what started my course of action was being touched by a charity in Ethiopia that was near where my family lives um, that was a school for underprivileged children and one day their meal program was pulled. And so my call to action came as a direct response to a need, not anything that I had created on my own or found, it kind of found me. I'd always loved making jewelry. And one day, a, a girlfriend of mine called and wanted me to make a necklace I'd made for her, for her friend, for her birthday. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna make it for you, but I'm gonna charge you $30, and all the money is gonna go to help these kids. And it blew her mind, and she's like, I'd happily pay for that. And can you write a little note saying that's what it's giving? And so I wrote, you know, this necklace gives 65 meals to one child with this purchase, happy birthday. The minute I did that, I thought, this is a tangible way to help these kids while also giving somebody a piece of jewelry that represents not only the kids and the cause, but the message of something so small can change somebody's life in such a big way. And it just started with wanting to help a couple children. And that's why I always say, don't think so big necessarily. I know a lot of people tell you think big, but if you start small and it's from your heart, it'll grow into something beautiful and, and just trust that whatever you're passionate about and you put your time and energy to will grow into your purpose and your cause. You don't have to have one thing that makes you feel fully fulfilled. You can follow your passion, whether it's being an athlete or being a writer or being a teacher. And that doesn't necessarily have to be your purpose. It can be, and that's amazing, but for most of us, it doesn't come into one little bow. My passion was acting. My purpose was helping women and children in need, but they were very different. And so I was able to figure out a way to do both. And that the only way to have a lasting legacy is to do something outside of yourself and to help someone else. I think coming from Los Angeles, it's the town of people wanting to become famous and wanting to have a huge voice and a huge impact. And that doesn't mean as much as I feel like you guys think it does. Some of the most famous people that I know are some of the saddest people that I've ever met in my entire life. More things don't make you happy. Nicer cars don't make you happy. Who you know doesn't make you happy. Family and love and how you treat other people is really how joy comes about. I know it sounds cheesy and silly, but it's true. I think going through life with an open heart and looking at people with respect and love is how you come to your purpose. You're gonna live and you're gonna die and you can't take anything you did for yourself with you. But the mark that you leave on anybody else around you is what's really everlasting and in the end makes you happy.